Hey, James G here with Tarpley Music in Fort Worth, Texas, which you can always find us online if you need to at tarpleymusic.com. So, James, why all the monitors? Well, uh, today we're actually going to talk about a predecessor and the current generation of the Personas Aries series, okay? So these are the Aries E5 XTs. This is the current one, or the Gen 2, the Aries Studio 5s. Now, there are some differences, obviously, and there's some updates to it. Um, first of all, as you look at it, uh, this the low driver has been ported uh, deeper back into, into the speaker itself. The LED or the light that is actually lighting up is underneath there. Still a very elegant looking speaker. It just looks a little bit modernized, as you would expect, uh, with something that, um, you know, is the newer gen, right? However, there's a couple of other really important things, in my opinion, that have changed. So, as far as the dispersion, the waveguide dispersion of the speaker itself. So, this generation was 100 by 60, which is a pretty good widespread, but these actually go up to 120. So, you get 20 more uh, degrees of, of that. And why is that important? Well, you know, big part of mixing is panning and putting things right, right place in the mix. And so it's a lot clearer to hear that if you got a bigger, wider dispersion, in my opinion. So, and that's what they're going for in this. So you get a little bit more dispersion. You do have a little bit more power, too. These were bi-amped at 70 watts. These are bi-amped at 80. So you are going to get a little bit more push, uh, just in general, for the same size speaker. Um, and, well, you know, more power can get a cleaner, cleaner signal as well. And not to mention, as simple as it seems, but they put a standby switch on the back of these, which is great. Um... Because depending on how your setup is, you know, your home studio setup or professional studio setup, something like that, you might need to flip those uh, standbys on as opposed to literally just turning it off and repowering it up. So important to me as well. And if you look at the, uh, we actually have a frequency charts. Um, and if you look at both of them, they both kind of have where that 100 is. There's a, uh, and the newer ones, they got a small little peak and then it kind of flattens out a little bit where it's much rounder in the older ones. So when you're thinking bass drum, you're really down in that, usually in that 100 to 50, you're really thinking kick drum, right, if you're doing. So 50 hertz gives you that big boominess. The 100 gives you a punch, generally, in a bass drum. So you're going to probably be able to get the, a throaty punch out of it a little bit a little bit quicker. And then they both at 10K, where you're talking really sparkly highs, uh, they, will, they have where they gradually go up. And that's probably just because of the size of that. They want to bring a little bit of that sparkle out. I actually tend to go back in the back of one with the high frequency and I can pull it down just a little bit so I feel it's a little bit more flat uh, flat up there because the high frequency, that's where it affects it is at 10K. So um, there are some changes and little changes in, in monitors can really make a big, big difference, especially with something that's at a great price point that a lot of people at home can afford for their home studios that work, work very, very, very well. In fact, our YouTube studio here is actually using a persona that is a generation before these, and we've gotten good results out of it. So you can imagine my excitement of having these uh, in the house, right? So what we're going to do is I've actually got a song that I did, and I'm going to do a mix on both sets of speakers. Um, and then we will let you hear both of those and you can see if you can hear any subtle differences what which mix you might prefer and we can take all the comments good bad and the ugly it's fine I'm a grown boy I can take it and uh, but say whatever uh, you you think but as I said before sometimes these little subtle difference in monitors and an upgraded thing can really make a difference I'm excited for a little bit more of a dispersion there for uh, clear mixes because uh, panning is a really big thing for me so Let's do that. We'll go head to head. We're going to do a mix on both of these speakers and we're just going to see how they compare.
loves to laugh and knows when to cry. And I know that she really loved me because I read it in her eyes. Well, through thick and thin, we'll always fight to stay alone. XTs and the Studio Fives. Really, they both win. No one's really winning here. Because like I said, a lot of this is perspective and it's, you know, what the engineer prefers and everyone's ears are different and there's all these kinds of factors. But I will say that I was at first I was kind of thinking there's probably not going to be that much of a difference in the mix between these two. Um, and it's really hard to say because, you know, I listen to that song, right, so many times that I go and take a break and I put in new monitors and I listen to it again. So I was just trying to get to where I got kind of a fresh approach to doing a basic mix down with that, which is really what I did. I did notice, though, even with the 20-degree 20, uh, 20 disbursement here, I did feel like panning was a little bit easier, and it was still easier to control the bass. Now, I don't know if that's because it's just maybe sunken in more, because I do know they both roughly get down to 48 hertz, but I just felt it was a little bit more uh, easier to do. To do with that. I also felt like my reverbs popped out a little bit more. So it's kind of hard to do because you're like, okay, am I listening for different things because of these different monitors? You know, uh, and I'd be really interested to hear comments on that too. When people have monitors, do you do you feel like, okay, are my ears playing tricks on me because I'm trying to listen for something different, or is there really that little bit of a difference? But I'll tell you from a mixing standpoint, I really felt like I could pinpoint some really good 
Um, because I'll always do, I'll close my eyes generally, I do all my panning that way, and then I'll check a phase meter to make sure every, everything from that standpoint, but I always trust my ears first. Um, and so I feel like there was a little bit of that. So I think that for the price point, with the improvements of how these things are sunken in with 20, it's definitely an upgrade that is worth looking into. However, I these are fantastic monitors, these XTs. So it's just, I don't think they really make a bad monitor. I know that's such a cop out, but it's really kind of true. Um, so I, for me, who won, I think it was a pretty close tie into that, but I definitely would go the little extra mile with this because I really like that extra dispersion of feeling like I've got more room to work with in the panning. So interested to know what you thought of uh, like i said we the comments will take the good the bad and the ugly it's fine and uh just uh if you have any questions that we can try to get back to on these monitors that would be great as well give us a thumbs up if you liked this video and maybe if you want to see some more videos like this uh we like to know what works um and so of course if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do so by hitting the subscribe button below and if you'd like to know as we drop more videos, as we do them every, every single week, we can notify you. Just turn on the little bell there on turn on notifications, and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.